guys, um, this is a little bit of a familiar intro already because I've actually filmed this once before. So last week I headed to Lowe's and I got all of the demo materials and supplies I felt like I needed to start on the kitchen demo because there's still a little bit of work happening in the house. I figured I might as well make a little noise as well while there's other noise happening and get the tile out of the kitchen and here's what that looked like. We made our way to Lowe's. I think we need this. <laughs> like, what do you do with it, though? This looks like it will get it all off. This one literally looks like Balenciaga. This looks like Kim Balenciaga. Wait, those, well, those <laughs> so are actually kind of cute. cute. <laughs> those are so chic. These ones are Gucci, Gucci goggles. I've never demoed anything in my life. Doesn't seem from what I've seen anything crazy. Didn't do anything. Getting ready, she's getting her demo outfit on. <laughs> I'm ready to demo in my demo outfit. It looks like you're in, like, in a music video. <laughs> ah! This is harder than expected. I don't have time for this. That's gonna break. Yeah, that's not gonna do anything. Maybe I should have gotten one of those actual mallets. But then, like, what do you do with all this on the wall? Your mom's calling you. I'm demolishing things right now, I can't answer. So you guys took off a big chunk of the wall. Is that asbestos back there? I don't even know what asbestos is. I honestly thought you just like kind of hammer on the wall and they'd fall off. <laughs> that is a huge hole in the wall. This is bad. Did that work good? <laughs> this is so hard. I just keep burying holes in the wall. I sent a photo to Berlin and said, um, I think I broke the house, the tile won't come off, and he's calling. I, I made huge holes. I know, because they glue it, it's a glued mastic, glue to the wall. The oh, so it's just gonna rip off, kinda. It's the only way, you have no choice. <gasps> this is hard, I've been spending like 30 minutes on this little section. So clearly it didn't go as planned. I ended up making quite a few holes in the wall. The tile was extremely hard to remove and I don't know if I just didn't purchase the correct tools or maybe I wasn't using like, you know, the proper hammer, which I kind of realized I probably should have had more of a mallet. But in the end, I decided since I've never done any reno like this before, I'm going to bring in a professional that could teach me, but also teach you guys some maybe tips and tricks, some helpful tools that might help in the process. And I would just like to learn because I'm gonna have to be removing so much more tile throughout the space. So I figured might as well have a little help on the first one and then of course I could do the rest on the entire home with a little bit more knowledge so currently just waiting for Roberto to come over and then we are going to get started Roberto's here hello how did you only bring these two tools I thought we were gonna have some like contraptions to mm. remove it from the wall Mask, this, clothes, this is all we're using yes. <laughs> I thought we we're gonna have like jackhammers it's not that bad no this is so hard these are what I had used He's, he's, what are your thoughts? Even, you see, we you see we rake those. The only difference is because look, that's the only thing we don't have to damage, and we have to be keep this surface. Uh, oh, flat, okay. Like, got it. So like, we want to keep this. Yeah, exactly. So like what you guys did over here. Exactly. Got it. But if you want to just replace the tile, we just need to be pop the tile up. Yeah, and leave that like exactly. layer, this layer here. Exactly. Got it. We're about to get started, and thankfully I brought my mask today and my gloves. I also didn't really mention that we're gonna be removing the upper cabinets in here as well. So there's two uppers on this side and then there's two uppers on this side. And I just don't really like them. They're kind of out of place and I don't think I'd use them because we have a, quite a bit of cabinet space over here. So we're gonna pull those down and I'm gonna be getting rid of those. Where do you start? Is basically we need to just demolish this door first. Remove the yeah. door and then the screw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I decided to remove the upper cabinets in the main kitchen area, and that's because I wanna have some open shelving in this space, and I'd like to have more of an airy open design. Since I couldn't open up the walls completely, I decided that this would open up a little bit more of the space as well. So in that, we had to remove all the upper cabinets, which just basically requires using a crowbar to pop the cabinet off the wall. We got it. All right, that's the first one. All right, I'll put it in here. And yes, my friends, I really thought I was going to be able to give you some great information on how to remove this tile, but nope, we're just using exactly what I started with, a mallet and a crowbar. See, look, my own holes. 
zero one, you have to get through a precise. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing now. And it mainly was that I was doing that wrong, I wasn't as precise as I probably should have been, but something that we also found out a little bit later was that the drywall that I was actually working against was a bit older, and there was more of a sheetrock layer over on the opposite side, which is a bit more durable, so the drywall was kind of just crumbling. And at this point, I realized the drywall is going to need repaired anyway, so I might as well make this easier on myself. Souvenir. <laughs> Repair tool, what do I do? Oh, I got it! See, it seems like it always just like breaks in. Okay, at least it's not me. This is older drywall here, so the white is, and then this is newer, so if it was this on here, it probably wouldn't have broke as much. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of work. So tiring. Now I understand why people pay for this. <laughs> so, so far, I am extremely sweaty. The first thing I could say is it's super hot in here, and this is a lot of work. I did not realize how much upper body strength you need, first of all, to hammer like even the mallet itself is super heavy and we're using crowbars mallets and the drywall's damaged in a lot of the areas so i'm creating a bunch of holes and then it makes it hard for you to actually get in because there's a hole so all around it is definitely trial and error and i feel like every kitchen's different of course this one is an older kitchen it has a lot of older drywall in it so that's probably the reason as to why you know i'm creating a bunch of holes so we are going to have to get the drywall patched and then i'll be able to tile over the top and then as you guys saw we started removing the upper cabinets i wanted to really open up this space because it's quite a small kitchen in a large home, so I want to make it feel larger without having to remove structural walls. So I'm removing the uppers, and this is the last upper that I have to remove over here. Roberto has left. He was here for like two hours and we got a majority done, but now I'm on my own, which is lovely. And I have to finish the rest of the kitchen and then the wall behind and then this entire wall over here. So let's get started. That was a good one. Woo! Got it. Yes, that is sweat. That is sweat on my butt. All right, guys, we have our last piece. This is the last piece of tile in the whole kitchen. Well, at least besides the wall, but. Get it off. It's off! It fell down the hole, actually. Yay! So this is what the demo kitchen looks like in the end. I know it looks absolutely insane at the moment, uh, but basically what you guys are seeing is a lot of open drywall. We're exposing the framework, and that wasn't the original goal. Originally, I thought that we would be able to chip it off the top of the surface, kind of like what we did on this side. As you guys can see, this entire wall, really, we didn't puncture any holes in it at all, and the floor tile that was applied to the wall was just so much easier to remove. It kind of came off in large chunks, whereas for the smaller tile, Tiles, you needed to use a crowbar and kind of push against something to pry them off and when you pushed against the drywall it kind of collapsed inside unless you had a stud behind it so that's why we have a lot of exposed drywall so now basically what needs to happen is Belin's team is going to come back in and re-drywall and just do brand new drywall all over this area or sheetrock and that'll give us a nice smooth surface which we can then go back in and tile just headed home because I had to take a shower, you guys, because look at how much I sweated. And I hope this isn't gross, but I have to share it. 
I didn't even know you could sweat through denim. For some reason, I thought it was like sweat proof and clearly it's not. These are actually heavy at the moment. Like, listen. <laughs> Back from the store and I got some bags to discard all of this. Now I saw these on TikTok actually the other day, which came in handy, but these are basically like woven contractor bags. So they're heavier than your traditional bags. So if you need to haul out um, like material, you can do so. Let me open these. So here's what one of those bags looks like. Oh wow, they're actually really big. It's like a really big, big woven bag essentially. So let's start getting rid of all the trash, but I'm gonna put on gloves and a mask first, just so the dust doesn't go everywhere. Stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away. Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. About two hours later, and the kitchen is clean. Look at this, guys. It looks so different already. It looks like I did a full gut job in here, but this is really removing all of the tile. They are gonna have to drywall patch all of those areas that the tile, of course, ripped the drywall off of, and then we'll be retiling over the top. Now, I have a ton of fun ideas for this kitchen, been brainstorming, and I am so excited. We also opened it up so much. So this is what that area looks like here. And then over here, this is what that area kind of looks like when you go around the corner. And then we have this demoed area as well, because I'm gonna be redoing the backsplash there. Countertops are gonna be redone as well, which is probably going to be the next step because I actually ended up bringing the countertop guy over, but he told me that I needed to demo all of the tile before he could properly measure. That way we can see the actual spacing that we have. So the tile's demoed and we are ready for the countertop guy. I'm genuinely scared of the state that you're going to see me in throughout this house makeover journey, but just don't hold it against me, please. I will thoroughly say my body has never been as sore as it currently is. Um, I'm over at the house this morning because as you guys know, we finished up the kitchen demo or at least removing all the tile. I still do have to remove the floor tile, but I'm hoping and I'm thinking that might be a little bit easier because they are larger and I'm pretty sure there's like a special tool to get it up. I've seen it online before, but what I wanted to go over today was just a little bit more of the direction as to which I want to take the kitchen because I believe the kitchen is going to be one of the first spaces I'm planning on making over and that's because it's going to be a space that's going to be utilized quite often. Of course, this is going to be the main kitchen used in the home. Now there is a second kitchen downstairs, which is going to stay. A lot of people are asking me if I'm keeping two kitchens in this entire house. And yes, I am because the, the entire bottom floor is more so going to be like the Lone Fox headquarters in a sense, if that makes sense. And I might add people onto the team and such. So I want to have an area that I can expand in and I already need a lot more space in general. So I actually want to start with the upstairs kitchen first. And I pulled up my mood board here. Exciting guys. We got internet at the house, which is really great and it was fiber as well which is the best. I've slowly been creating little boards like this for every single room and just adding things as I go. But this is using a site called Mila Note. Um, and this is sponsored in absolutely zero way, but I thought it could be maybe a little bit helpful for you guys. So I wanted to share a little bit of the kitchen direction. So in this board here, I have three images right here. And this is kind of the color palette and tone that I kind of want to go for a bit in terms of cabinetry. So I love these wood cabinets but we already do have cabinets in the kitchen space. Now, I'm not gonna go in and install walnut wood cabinets as much as I would love to. It'd be quite expensive. So I'm thinking of doing like a dark brown paint to kind of resemble the look of one of these. I just love the dark cabinetry contrasted with the like creamy, lighter cabinetry. And I think that's something I wanna play around with is maybe doing uh, the darker cabinetry in the main kitchen area and then maybe doing the creamier cabinetry in the butler pantry section. And then over on the right side here, we have some 
flooring options. Now, if you guys remember in my past video, we went to Country Floors and I actually saw these terracotta styles here, which I think are really great, are decently priced for terracotta. Now, this one was the one that I ideally wanted. I love this flooring. Something about it is just so moody. I thought it would be such a great base um, to kind of mix with some of our other photos over here. But this flooring is so expensive, I can't even tell you guys the pricing of it. I emailed and asked for a quote on it and I can't even let you guys know, but it's over $100 a square foot, which is absolutely crazy, but it's so pretty. It's all handmade, which is definitely why. I thought that the uh, placement of these bricks was really nice and I love how they utilized it in the kitchen. I just really love that really raw look in a kitchen, like using brick or terracotta or natural stone and just making it almost feel like an outdoor, indoor environment in the kitchen space. That's something that I absolutely love. So um, this was another option over here from Bedrosians, which is a lot more of an affordable option, but it's more uniform. And so I'm not loving that. I kind of want something a bit more organic. So I'm leaning more towards the terracotta, but I'm still not entirely sure because our kitchen is really going to be dictated on the countertops. And that is something we are conquering next, guys. Within probably the next two videos or so, we are going to be purchasing the slabs for the countertops. And that's gonna be able to give me a bunch more direction because once I have actual photos of the slabs, I could pop those in my little Mila note here. But once we do have the slabs, that's gonna give us a lot more direction because I'm really letting the marble slabs in this particular kitchen space determine a lot of the other selections and colors that we do utilize. But something I wanna do, which actually isn't on this mood board, is I do wanna do a bit of a marble backsplash in the kitchen too. So if you could imagine, we're gonna have the marble countertops, you know, across the bottom or on the countertop and then up the backsplash I want it to go up probably about 18 to 24 inches of marble as well and that's because I really want this marble to be on display you know if I'm splurging on some Calcutta Monet or Viola or it, these beautiful marbles with grain work in them I also want them to be almost wall art as well so I want to bring it in the countertop bring it up the wall a bit I feel like that just gives it such a luxe look and then on top of the marble I'm also considering kind of adding more of that Spanish element back into the kitchen with using some authentic 1920 Spanish tile now these two are just reference photos for like some ideas I guess but I love the idea of maybe a mosaic style on top as like a trim border on top of the marble, or maybe just a simple trim border that I can salvage from a salvage store. I really can go two ways with the hardware in here. We can go very Spanish revival and take it, you know, a little bit Gothic in a sense and go black hammered iron with kind of those like scroll work details on the ends, or we can bring it a little bit more transitional and kind of a little bit more modern as well, but keep that Spanish flair and style with the terror Terracotta, because it is going to be one of the first spaces that we're working on in the home. And I will say too that spaces are going to be worked on simultaneously. And that's just because when you have a house and you need flooring or wall tile or a new oven or anything like that, it takes a very, very long time. Normally when I'm doing these rental friendly makeovers, I can go on Amazon and get a two day shipped floor tile, you know, peel and stick for an apartment. In my case, I need about eight to 10 weeks to get the floor tile for like the bathroom or the kitchen. So there is going to be some bouncing back and forth here and there, but I think it's gonna be really fun and I'm trying my best to make sure that I'm editing it in a way that makes it really kind of fluid for you guys and makes sense as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and it gave you a bit more of a direction as to where we're going for the kitchen space. Now I cannot wait for our next one, new video coming this Sunday. And guys, don't forget to also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok because I post so much more over there, which are both Lone Fox Home. I'll put them on the screen for you guys. I finally got a pumpkin coffee, my first one of the season. I will say Dunkin's though tastes a little bit like a pumpkin candle, but I, I can deal with this. Okay, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!